Hey, this is Jan from Let's Build Shopify. And today I will quickly show you how to set up a contact page if you don't already have one. And then we get into customizing the default form if it doesn't quite fit your needs. And actually the things that we will learn today are fairly simple, not too complicated. But still, I'm very excited to make this video because while preparing it, I had the idea that in my next video, I would show you a very practical use case of all the things that we will learn today. And then I will also explain why some developers can charge 100 or even above dollars per hour for their services, even if they don't always require some advanced technical skills. So this is going to be super interesting for all the freelancers and developers in the audience. Make sure to watch out for that. But today we have to learn the basics first and let's get into it. All right, setting up a contact page can be done in 20 seconds. You would just go to the pages section of your Shopify admin dashboard then you click on add page and we could call it contact or contact us, doesn't really matter. And you can also add a short description, maybe contact us here for simplicity now. And most important, you would apply the page template to page.contact and then save it. And once we check on the front end, you would see that this already brings up the default contact form. And you can see this is nothing too fancy. We have the page content on top followed by two text fields that are taking half of the container width. Then we have one full row text field and down below a text area, followed by the submit button. And we can already keep the structure in mind so that we will have an easier time getting an overview in the theme files soon. Uh, but one other thing is very important and that is when someone submits this form, Shopify will send you an email and they will send it to the customer email that you can set up in the general store settings. So I would just search for general and this would bring up the general settings and then you can enter the customer email right here. All right, next we will start adding some new fields to the contact form itself. So therefore I will navigate to my theme files and here's this little action button and then go to edit code. This would bring up the Shopify theme file editor and in the template section, I would search for the page.contact template and actually I would copy everything in here and then I would create a new template just so that we have the backup. It's a new page template and we could call it contact-custom. Create the template and paste everything in here and then save it. And now that we've created the custom page template, we would also need to go back to our page and then apply this template right here and save the change. All right, so before we start making some customizations to our new contact page template, let's get ourselves an overview. And therefore I switch to full width and zoom in a bit so you can read this better. And let's start from top to bottom. So we can see on top we have a few container elements that should limit the content width on the page. And down here we have the page title put out to the page. And down below we can see the page content is put out to the page. And here it starts to get interesting. We see the opening form tag and everything that is in between the opening form tag and this end form tag right here makes up the actual contact form. And if you are very new to HTML, you might find my intro video on that helpful. I will link it in the top right corner. But for now, I think we can walk through this together. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that every input field on the front end is actually made up of two elements in HTML. And first we have a label element to describe what kind of input we expect from the user. And then we have some markup for the actual text field or input box, however you want to call it. And just by reading them through, we can identify all the elements that we currently have on the front end. So for instance, here we have the label for the contact form name and the corresponding input is of type text. And further down, we have the label for the contact form email and the input is of type email, which is basically text as well, but with some validation. And further down, you can find a label for the phone number and a corresponding input element. Then we have a label for the customer message and a text area with 10 rows down below. And last but not least, we find an input element of type submit, which is the send button. And you can see it's very easy to associate the elements from the front end with the corresponding code. And now that we've identified all these input elements, we could already start removing unwanted ones. So for example, if I don't want to ask the customer for his phone number, then I could remove these two lines and then save the change. And after a refresh on the front end, the phone number field should be gone. And it is. But we don't want to limit this to removing fields, but instead we want to be able to add custom ones. Okay, so the first custom field that we will add to our contact form will be a drop down menu to ask the user for his or her concern. And this will help to segment these emails better and you can prioritize them better or maybe even process them faster. And 
It's not too complicated to do. So we will start by adding a label element. And this should describe what the input field is for. So we will go with what's your concern for now. What's your concern? And down below, I will create a select element. And in between this select element, we will add a few option elements. So option one, uh, maybe we can go with three options. And the first one will be, let's say, question regarding a product. And then we could have question regarding your order. Uh, and third, we could have, let's say, partnership and marketing. And maybe we could even add a fourth option. If none of these fit very well, we could just say other. And now comes the most important part because we have to add a name attribute to our select element. And this name can't be anything. It needs to be very precise, contact, and then square brackets. And in between these, you could write any text. So for example, customer concern. But this is the only way that it would get picked up from the Shopify system if a user sends the form. And then there's one more thing we need to do, and that is tell the label element for which input element it is meant to be. And therefore, I will add a for attribute. And to reference our new select, I will first need to give it a unique ID. And for now, we could go with, let's say, contact-concern. And then I can say the label element should be for contact concern. Or better to say for the input element with the ID contact concern. And now after saving our new changes, we can have another look at the front end. And after refreshing the page, we should now see our new dropdown and it seems to work fine. And what about adding another text field? But this time I don't want it to take the full container width, but instead only half of it, like the text fields above do. Let's figure that out. So back in the theme files, I will now scroll back up to the top. And we already saw the input element for the customer's name and the input element for the customer's email. And we can see that both of these elements are wrapped in between one container element that is called grid. And both of these elements have an individual container with the class of grid item and the modifier class medium up dash dash one half. And that class suggests that on every device with a screen size of medium and up, we want this container to take one half of the available width. So I think in order to add a new element, we can just copy this container and I will paste it right before the end of the grid and close the HTML tag. And now we can implement our new text input in between this container. So I will start with the label element again. And down below, I will have an input of type text. And maybe we could ask for the user's company. Maybe you are selling on a B2B shop or something. So we would add a company and text. Okay. And now the most important thing again, we need to provide a name attribute and it has to be contact square brackets and then some arbitrary text. So we could go with company and then save the new text field. And after another refresh, you would now see our new company field and it seems to work just fine. And obviously for aesthetics reason, you want to put another half width text field right next to it. Um, but if you don't have another, then you can make this full width and pull it outside all the grid containers and half width containers. But right here, this is just for demo purpose. All right, last but not least, I will show you how you can add some radio buttons because some people like them more over these dropdown menus. And let's work on that. So once again, back into theme files, I would scroll down to the bottom and maybe in between the text area and the submit button, we can add a new label element. And let's do, or well, we could ask the user how he discovered the shop. So we could ask, how did you hear about us? And then we would add a few input elements, but let's do one first. So I will go with input and the type will be radio. And we also have the, to add the name attribute again. So name will be, you guessed it, contact, square brackets. And let's do discovery. 
And now we could copy this element three times, or let's say two more times. And at the end of each element, I will add a break line tag so that it drops to a new line. And otherwise they will be just in line, which is also fine. And here we can add a little description. So the options could be Facebook and Instagram or other. And then we would also need to provide a value attribute because the description actually doesn't matter and only the value in the value attribute will be submitted. So here we could go with Facebook, Instagram, or other, and then save our new changes. And after the next refresh, we should now see our new radio buttons. And here they are, and they seem to work fine. But one thing that I notice is we can't select them by clicking on the text and that's not the best usability. So let's fix that really quick. And to do so, we would need to wrap our plain text description inside a label element. So I will create a label element. And I think we can just copy this two times. And then I would cut and paste the description in between that label element. And now I would again need to tell the label to which radio button it belongs. So I will provide the for attribute. And in order to reference these value, uh, these radio buttons, we need to provide an ID again. So the ID could be discovery Facebook. And the next one could be discovery Instagram and discovery other. So let's do this with copy paste. Instagram and other. And then this one could be for discovery Facebook. This one could be for discovery Instagram. And this one could be for discovery other. Hope this wasn't too fast and makes some sense. And when I save this one more time and check the front end again, we could see an improved usability. Nice. All right, that's it for today's video. And I really hope you learned something new and you will be able to implement all the customizations that you come up with. And as I mentioned in the beginning, in my next video, I will show you a very practical use case of everything that we learned today. And then I will also talk about how you should price yourself as a freelancer or web developer if you're implementing such things. So this is going to be super interesting and feel yourself invited to subscribe. And if you have questions, you can always leave them down in the comment section. And I really hope to see you back then. Bye.